everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today is a very fun project because for once I am not doing it alone. I'm very excited today to be joined by my new friend Tessa Jane. If you haven't heard of her or watched any of her videos, please go check her out. She is amazing. We actually talked for like over an hour when we did our Zoom call and we just had so much fun just chatting and getting to know one another. So make sure and check out her video on this collab because you'll see the other side of things and how she tackled her project. So the next clip you're gonna see is the video call that Tessa and I had where we figured out what this project was going to look like and kind of shape this DIY challenge. So without further ado, let's go meet Tessa. Okay, so we're gonna be choosing the first category for our DIYs, which is the room that we're gonna be DIYing for. So the options are kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, living room, dining room, and office. So whatever we DIY will have to go in that room or would have to make sense going in that room. So let's see what Taylor's gonna be doing. Now's your chance. I know. <gasps> Ooh, kitchen. Okay, so Taylor's got kitchen. We're potty for you. Okay, now it's Tessa's turn. Where is Tessa's project, whatever she makes, going to have to live in and make sense in? Nice. Nice. Living room. That's, That's a good one. <laughs> we have a winner. <laughs> So exciting. Ooh. Okay. You have such like a broad open. I know. Oh my gosh. Watch, we gotta get like cement. Cement in the kitchen. What, what are you doing? Yes. <laughs> okay. Paper mache in the kitchen. <laughs> that works. All right. Okay. I don't know if I want another one then. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's like okay. Now you know what I have to work with, okay? You guys, I'm actually really excited about getting kitchen for the room that I am tackling. Okay, but then you throw in the fact that it has to be some aspect of what I make has to be with paper mache. And that's where I am like I draw a blank because number one Paper and the kitchen like don't necessarily mix. The only paper I have in my kitchen is recipes. Paper in the kitchen, you just think like there's water, there's oil, like stuff that's going to be absorbed into the paper mache. And like, we can't have that. I can't make something out of paper mache that's gonna get soaked and destroyed. So I looked on the internet, like that's when I realized, okay, there are things I can make. One of the things that I saw was a fruit bowl that was actually really cool looking and I'm going to attempt to do this. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is a, and I didn't actually see this. This was like my own brain that conjured this, which maybe, maybe that's dangerous. Maybe I should just rely on the internet for my ideas because I've never done this before and I'm filming it. So I don't wanna mess up, but. My brain thought of, okay, why don't we just like do a flower vase and not make a flower vase out of paper, but what if we take an already created flower vase and put paper mache on the outside to add texture to a vase, maybe make it a different color. And I think that could be really, really pretty in the kitchen with some fresh flowers. Who doesn't love flowers in the kitchen? So those are the two things that I'm going to create using paper mache, a fruit bowl with a wicker basket and then a flower vase with a glass vase. With those ideas in mind, I popped by an estate sale to see what I could find. And I actually found this vase. It's just a typical glass like trumpet vase with the neck of the vase that kind of opens up at the top so it's more wide. Anyways, I thought that was beautiful. It was $4, it still has a tag on it. And I just thought that could be really cool covered in a paper mache and then with like a sweet bouquet of flowers out the top. So that will be one project that I will attempt. The other is a 10 inch wicker basket and it's pretty old. I can see like it's kind of like washed out in areas. I really liked the rim at the top of the basket and then just the, the tone of the, the wicker I really like. So I thought that would look really pretty as a little, a little fruit bowl. So I have my two items that I'm going to be using for my paper mache projects. Finley has given his sign off on my ideas as 
project foreman as always and are you ready okay let's go over and get started on our kitchen paper mache diy challenge all right this is where the magic happens because i found kind of like a a cheat code to paper mache when i think paper mache i think back to like middle school when I'm making a pinata for my Spanish class and I am ripping up paper and dipping it in glue water and then sticking it on my balloon. That's so messy. So I did some research and I found something called Cellu-Clay by Acti Activa. And what it is, is it's, it's like powder that you mix in water and it makes like a paper mache substance. So Tessa, I hope this isn't cheating, but that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna mix up some cellu clay for my projects. And I'm actually considering for my vase, I'm wondering if I need to put like a base on top of the glass just so this stuff sticks to it. So I might take it outside and spray it with some matte clear um, spray paint just to give the paper mache something to stick to because glass is very um, non-stick. So I actually might do that really quick. As for the basket, I think it'll be fine. And we will go from there. I'm flying by the seat of my pants and hoping it all turns out well. So let's mix up our cellu clay, spray the vase and go from there. Okay, so I'm opening this package and I found instructions. I need 32 ounces of warm water to one pound of cellulite mixing. Eight ounces of water is one cup, so 32 is four cups. So we need four cups of water for this one pound. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, so we have the paper mache like cellu clay mixed up and my vase is dry. So I'm only going to do the outside of the vase, not inside the neck and not on the bottom. I don't think there's any like wrong way to do it. I'm just gonna put it on. I honestly don't know how thick I should be doing it. I don't want it to be too thin where it's gonna chip off, um, but I also don't want it to be too thick that it'll take five days to dry. This stuff is so cool because you can actually see like the paper fibers in it. I don't know, that's so cool. I'm gonna have to think of more projects that I can use this on because this is fun. I think you could do some really cool stuff with it. All right, enjoy the music that I will probably overlay this next part because there's nothing more to say. I'm just gonna be putting the cellu clay on this vase to some cool music. try something maybe don't try this at home I don't know this is a Terry Black's cup if you haven't tried Terry Black's you're missing out okay I'm gonna balance it on there and that way it can dry and also I can make sure that it doesn't rip if it's stuck to cardboard I really like how it looks now I'm not gonna do anything else am I missing anything do you guys see am I missing anything please tell me no because I'm already moving on. I'm moving on. Okay, moving on. Let's do the basket. I'm gonna move this to a, a somewhere it can dry and then we'll do the basket. All right, next up is the basket. And I already went ahead and mixed the other block of paper mache. So I'm just gonna do the paper mache up to the rim and the rest of it is just gonna be paper mache. Seasons change, but I'm stuck in this pattern where every little thing matters too much. I can see the stains of all the careless words I say them cause they hurt So that is 
my attempt so far with the sides. It's definitely more awkward putting it on the sides because I can't like rest the basket on anything. And also my hands are getting really dry. So maybe I'll get like a little thing of water to like dip my hands in to keep working. I feel like that just makes this a lot easier to work with. I don't know how that's gonna look with just the wicker rim. I honestly kind of like the look of just the paper on the inside, but then you can't see it from the outside if there's fruit in it, so. We press on, we keep going, we stick to the plan, trust the process, we'll just see what this looks like, and then you can judge based off of the result if that's something you want to do. This cup is from Kubi's, a German restaurant here in Dallas. Shameless advertising of some of my favorite restaurants here in Dallas. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. This is honestly super heavy. I really like it. I think it looks so cool. I'm excited to see what it looks like when it's dry and then we can sand it down, make it a little more even and put some fruit in it. The instructions say to let it dry overnight or 24 hours. So I'm gonna check on it in the morning and see what it looks like when it's dry. So this is how they dried. You can see they're a little lumpy, bumpy, um, but overall I'm really loving how they've turned out. So I'm actually gonna take some sandpaper smooth this one out. I'm actually going to be painting this one. This one I'm gonna leave white. So this is almost done. This one we're gonna do a little bit more work on. So I'm gonna get the sandpaper out and we're gonna smooth them out a little bit and then next steps. What do you think, Finn? You like them? <laughs> okay, let's get some work done. I still know the way. Okay, so I am just going to add maybe like a tablespoon of paint. You don't need a ton, especially because we're going to water it down. A little goes a long way, so add a little bit of water. Okay, that's probably about equal parts, water and paint, because I really, I just want to do a wash. I don't want it to be thick paint. I don't want it to be straight water. Um, I want it to be like a wash of paint. So what we're looking for is really like a brown water. I don't know if you can see this, but it's literally just brown water. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And if you've seen my videos in the past, you know that I like using paper towels as paintbrushes because I feel like I have a little bit more control over larger surface areas. Feel free to use a paintbrush or even those foam paintbrushes. I like using paper towels, especially when I'm using like a mixed paint um, because I feel like I can dab it on better than a paintbrush. I don't know. You do you. This is my method and I'm sticking with it for now. So. Just gonna dip that in my paint wash and start dabbing. I love that. That wash of paint adds so much. And I also like that you can layer it to make it darker. I'm gonna work on going back in and adding layers of um, this color on top, just to add depth. I'm also toying with the idea of grabbing a darker paint and doing some layering on top as well, just to add a little bit more dimension. So we might do that. I might grab a darker paint and do that as well. Okay, so I did decide to go in with darker. I'm actually gonna add some burnt umber. This is almost gone, so I'm just gonna use up the rest of it. I need to reach out, stop our world from spinning. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I think this looks so cool, mostly because it just looks very organic. The fact that it looks handmade, I kind of like. I'm really excited to get some flowers and make a little arrangement to put in here. I think I'm done painting. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm going to style it in my kitchen with some florals and then some fruit in my fruit basket. And then we will do a reveal with Tessa and see how her project turned out. Hey guys, this is future Taylor editing this video. Tess and I recorded our grand reveal on FaceTime and we did not know that there is a law that actually prohibits audio being recorded during a FaceTime call. So just another reason for you to go check out her video over on her channel. I will link that below and I'm going to insert some B-roll of how my paper mache project turned out. Enjoy. I still know the way oh, This train is running late I seem a little far away But I'll get there someday Wait on me, wait on me, wait on me 
This DIY challenge really challenged my creativity, especially given the constraints of it being in the kitchen and with paper mache, which I really haven't used in a long time. Is this my best work that I've ever done? Absolutely not, but I am really happy with how it turned out. I would love to hear your ideas. If you were randomly assigned kitchen and paper mache, what would you make? Leave your comments down below. I'd love to see your ideas. Also be sure and check out Tessa's channel. I'm gonna link it down in the description box below with her video that she did of her project. I'm super excited for you to see what she created in her living room using wood. That's what she was assigned. This is where I leave you until next time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you're at in the world and I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, Finn, what do you think? Should I have made some food dishes for you? Maybe next time. Maybe next time.